Oh, I don't. My face? I don't play with that. Uh, on uh, okay. Facebook. Uh, no, I don't have that. Okay, so the way you use the chalk is you get the chalk off onto a separate piece of paper like this. And some people, uh, if your chalk's really hard, and the chalk isn't all equally the same amount of softness, so if your chalk's really hard, you can do it this way with an X-Acto knife. You can scrape the chalk off. But you can see that's more coarse than this. So it's better to just rub it off on the, on the paper. If it's soft enough to come off on the paper, use that method because you get a, a more fine, smooth uh, gradation that way rather than shaking it off with the X-Acto knife. So then you just fold the cotton pad over like this and get it full of the, the chalk and then you can put it on and you can get really beautiful smooth gradations from dark to light like that. And if you want to get a somewhat sharp edge you can use this sharpest fold area. You see how I, I fold it really tight and I run it into the chalk and I get an edge. So you can get a fairly sharp line that way. But if you, if you have a complex shape that has um, complicated curves and stuff, you can um, get a piece of tracing paper, which this is not, but with tracing paper you can see the drawing that's underneath and you can follow the outline by cutting and creating a mask like that. And then you can, you have the ability to have a really sharp edge. So maybe I'll just go ahead and, uh, since that mask has a shape of, I'll use that shape with the gradations. So now you can get a really sharp edge. And this technique using the chalk and the pad translates directly into Photoshop using the airbrush tool in Photoshop. So the assignment that we normally do in class is to redo some of the primitive forms using chalk instead of markers. So if I draw a cube, my pen, and then I use a couple pieces of paper to mask the dark side, the number three side, and now get some more chalk off of the chalk stick on the paper, get it onto the cotton pad, and now I'm using, it's real easy with a cube because of straight lines, assuming you know how to draw a straight line. And now I can get that really nice gradation from dark to light onto the cube. And now I'll do the number two side, a little bit lighter. So again, I'm using the mask. If I want to, I can mask the other two sides. Which one was I using? I don't have a pad of paper underneath the paper that I'm putting the chalk onto and it <coughs> I don't like the sound of it, I don't like the feel of it, but I don't have enough paper, so I recommend you have this pad underneath this one too. So here's the number two side, hopefully a little bit lighter. Let's see. No, it's too much the same. So now I have a choice, I can make the number three side darker or I could make the number two side lighter. So let me show you how you make the number. There's various ways you can manipulate the chalk. So you can make it a little bit lighter by taking a clean part of the pad and 
wiping some of the chalk off. Some of it will come off. So it's on here. And now it's a little bit lighter. But I still think those two sides are too close to the same, so I'm going to make the number three side even darker. <coughs> and the thing about chalks that you can't do with, um, well, you can do it with markers somewhat, but it's harder, is you can mix colors. I don't seem to have a darker red in this. Here's a darker red in this set, but I happen to know this, this one's really hard. Chalk. So I will mix some of this darker red with the lighter red. So you can mix colors. It's not very much darker red. And the number one side is just really light. It's still gradated dark to light close to far away. And we go, oh, wait a minute, Jim, you got a bunch of messy stuff going over the lines, but Oops. So with chalk, it's a lot more forgiving than the markers. You can just erase that off. Can you use any eraser or does it have to be the pink one? Um, actually, the white one's better, and I do have a white one buried in there. The problem with chalk is, um, as you can see, you get fingerprints all over, and some people like myself have very oily hands. Um, the good news about that is I'm going to age more slowly than somebody who doesn't, that has dry skin, but um, the bad news is I get fingerprints all over, so a lot of times I need to use another piece of paper that I'm always putting my hands on so that I don't get my fingerprints. Because with my oily hands, if I touch this paper, any chalk that gets on there is going to make a fingerprint because the paper has oil in it now that will catch the, the chalk. Do you recommend using gloves or? There's a few people that do use the white, really, there's uh, really lightweight, I guess, cotton gloves. I haven't used them, but some people do. Some people have a lot worse case than I do of oily hands, but I have pretty pretty oily hands. Um, people that do have oily hands, you can use that, like if you want to darken the chalk, you can actually put it on with your fingers, and that will, um, the oil in your hands will make it even darker and, and more rich colors, so you can use that to your advantage. Okay, so with the chalk, you can, if you make the kneaded eraser have a really soft, round form like I just created there, you can go back in and, and lighten uh, the chalk. It won't be quite as smooth and nice as what you put on with the pad, but um, sometimes it works, so you can lighten the chalk that way. Okay. Now, we talked before about reflections can be reflections of light things or dark things, right? So now that we have this chalk, we can um, 
we can use the eraser to put reflections in the surface. So like here's some reflections in the in the top top surface. Last semester when I did that, as soon as I said, ooh, and awe, oh, right? But you guys just kind of really not quite as emotional as they were, I guess. But. So now we'll put some reflections in, in this side, white, so it's reflecting something light. some of the chalk off the edge so I go back and erase it. So that's the basic uh, chalk technique. I use a clean pad to brush off the eraser. Is there an alternative we could use besides the pads or do we or, or should we get the Weeble cotton pads? You really should do your best to get them. They're getting harder and harder to get because yeah. they're meant for printers, offset printers, and there's hardly any offset printers left in the world. But um, they're far superior to anything else you can get. Um, you can use a regular cotton pad like for like people might use to take makeup off or something, but you can't control it like this. You can't get this nice sharp edge yeah. with it. And then there's, even Weaver will make some pads that are, that you can tear off, off of a roll, and they're not as good as this either. So, uh, it's kind of late now, but if you go online, you can buy these online. That's yeah. probably the easiest way to get them, but obviously yeah, it's going to take time. Amazon 2D shipping or something. Okay, so uh, 